Welcome back Codebreakers and today I've got a real treat for you. As you may or may not know, Black Forest Labs has just released an open source model and Comfy UI team has already integrated it. Specifically we're looking at the Flux1 context and this is arguably one of the most powerful image editing models released to date. Forget what you know about standard text to image, this is different and today we're going to walk through official Comfy UI example workflows to show you exactly how to use it. This is absolutely free, no subscriptions, you can download it, run it locally on your own machine and use it as much as you want. This is a state-of-the-art tool and it means your creativity is the only limit. Comfy Anonymous is the GitHub username for the original creators and lead developers of the entire Comfy UI project. If you look at the official GitHub repository where all the source code for Comfy UI is stored, you'll see it's at github.com Comfy Anonymous Comfy UI. Alright, here we are at the official Comfy UI examples page. I've linked to it down below. The first thing to notice is the model itself. The one we want is the Flux1 context dev.safe tensors. Now pay attention to the setup. This is critical. This is a diffusion model so it does not go into your checkpoints folder. You need to place the file in your Comfy UI models diffusion models folder. I see people get this wrong all the time. And a pro tip for all those with less VRAM, the team also provides a FPA quantized version. It's smaller, faster and the quality is still fantastic. Now here's where the magic starts. The Comfy UI team has made this incredibly easy. You don't have to build this workflow from scratch. Watch this. I can just take this example image from the page, drag it and drop it onto my Comfy UI canvas and boom, the entire workflow is loaded for you. This works for almost any image created with Comfy UI and it's the fastest way to learn. So when the workflow downloads, if you see some red boxes, do not panic. This is normal part of the process. This is where the Comfy UI manager is your best friend. Click the manager and hit install missing custom nodes. Let it run and fetch everything you need. Once it's done, you must restart Comfy UI and don't forget to refresh your browser. Make sure you got your clip models in your clip folder. Make sure your AE.safe tensors file is in your VAE folder. You can find links to these back at the Comfy Anonymous page. So this workflow needs four specific files and I've linked to them all in the description. First, your main flux context model goes in the diffusion models folder. The next two critical text encoders, clip L and T5 XXL models. Both of these go in your model text encoders folder. Finally, AE.safe tensors that goes into your models VAE folder. Get them all in the right place. Hit the refresh button in Comfy UI and now you're ready to cook. Alright, a quick disclaimer before we continue. The particular workflow I'm using can be found on comfy.org. The links are in the description. This official examples page that we're using has a ton of different workflows linked to the images. You can see them here for in-painting, making comics and more. For this video, I'm just going to walk through one core example to show you the principles. But I seriously encourage you to come back here, drag and drop the other examples and just experiment. That's the best way to learn. On that note, I've also built my own set of custom powerful Flux workflows and I'll be posting them all on my website codebreakers.site over the next few days, so keep an eye out for those. Alright, with that said, let's have some fun. I'm going to run two super simple generations on the same base image to show you the two core superpowers of Flux context. We'll take an image of this girl and we'll write the prompt, the girl is sitting in a hotel lobby. So on the first generation we hit a hitch. The red box around the node indicates the problem. This is the point where the workflow stopped. So I didn't select the flux context model in the load diffusion model selector. I'm using the FP16 version. You use the version that's right for you. The FP8 models run on a lower VRAM setup. For the highest quality, try to stick to the FP16 models. But this of course requires VRAM. Experiment with your setup to get the best results. But remember, you need to download the models and place them in the correct folders. In the dual clip loader, I didn't select the right clip encoders. So here in the dual clip loader, I will select in the drop down menu the clip L safe tensors file and the T5XXL file. Now we can run the prompt and it should run. The first one usually takes the longest. This is because models have to load up into the VRAM. This is a one time operation and the subsequent generations should be a lot quicker. We'll check the generation speeds after a few runs. And as you can see, the results are absolutely amazing. This is from a single image. We'll test another prompt quickly. You can follow the green border to see where the workflow is currently running. Each generation is taking about 25 seconds. And the results are equally amazing. And there's no doubt that there is likeness to our preview image. 
although in the image you might notice that the legs are a little bit short so we can change the seed and we can try again and I think you might agree that the second run is a little bit better than the first so you can try changing the seed and rerunning the workflow so here is a final and most important tip if you like a result but it's not perfect just change the seed this gives the AI a new starting point it creates a new variation of the same idea experiment with your prompts experiment with your seed that is the key you can experiment with some of these settings to see what works best for you let's be a bit playful with the last prompt and uh, we'll have her in a bikini on a beach and let's see how that comes out so I'm going to show you one last workflow. So you select the disabled node and you can toggle it by using Control B. Okay, one last experiment. This is the real magic. We have two images, our octopus character and this portal. The goal is simple, we replace the character inside the portal. And the prompt is here, it tells the story. Watch the prompt, I describe the final scene, I'm telling Flux to merge these two ideas, let's run it. And there it is, our character appears inside the portal. It understood the context of both images and fused them together. This is an incredibly powerful technique. So that is it, the power of Flux context. Better editing, better control, the tools are getting more powerful every day. It's our job to master them. If this guide helped you, hit that subscribe button. We're here to give you practical knowledge to stay ahead. Thanks for watching, stay curious and keep decoding.